Okay, we start now. Second topic for today, self-evaluation. Self-evaluation. While I was preaching the other times, a few people raised their hands. So I wanted to know, did I eventually answer your questions? Yeah, I answered your questions. The, the, the lady is not there, I think. Okay. I think you, I answered your question, right? Okay. Now, uh, Pastor Derek, could you come and share the things you shared with me yesterday? Uh, or you know already? Okay, come on. Um, we've all been here for a number of days now, and I've noticed uh, just in the last couple of days, I began to feel a real heaviness on my soul. That's the best way I could describe it. A weight, and it was so much so that it was either yesterday or the day before. I didn't even leave my room in the morning. And what I felt was happening was I began to feel the awe of God on this place and this move of God. And the fear of the Lord gripped me so strong that I began to repent. And this may sound strange to some, but I began to repent for thinking that I could understand this move of God. That I could just talk about it so easily and break down my four or five points of what I thought is happening here and we'll just take the system and take it back to Canada. And yes, you can reproduce the principles and all of that. But there's something happening here that is so divine, so holy, and so special that we can miss it if we think we understand it so easily. And we did some taping with Pastor Sunday, and you know, that was great, and talking about the kingdom of God, and all that was great. But I began to repent for pride in my heart, for thinking that you could just reproduce something without paying a price. Because somebody died to see this happen. And no matter what systems you put in place, no matter how much you talk about it and reproduce it, God is still looking for a man. Because that is one of the things I didn't get to today. Because a sin that is sown must first die. Mm -hmm. And when the sin is sown, it must fight the obstacles and the roots and the things on the ground. It must fight for survival. Mm -hmm. But then it eventually overcomes that environment. Mm -hmm. And eventually comes. But the force for the bird to come out of the soil is a, is a lot of resistance. So nobody can really uh, bring, before the seed could become the tree that brings in the harvest. You know, it's a long process. So I didn't get into, into all that. And I began to uh, take The my... first thing is that that seed that is sown only dies after it is sown. While you are okay, while you have not entered into your mind, you don't feel any pressure. But when it's sown, that's when death goes into there. Mm -hmm. But that is eventually necessary for it to be able to become the bring in the harvest is when to become to bring in. I, I began to take my own heart into evaluation <laughs> and I became literally emotional over this that we really don't know the state of our own hearts unless we submit ourselves to God in some serious death and prayer. We don't know what's in our heart. We are people. Our nature is to retract from death or to, to fear death when God wants to deal with you. But I just, you know, to be totally honest, I felt foolish. Uh, and I felt afraid that God is doing something so miraculous here and you don't see it in the rest of the world. And we talk so easily about it. And it, it's such a holy thing that the Lord is doing here. And we just talk about it and we just... Uh, we don't know the condition of our hearts. And until you surrender yourself to God, your, what's really in your heart can't totally be revealed. And I began to have a respect for what the price this man has paid. And we can talk and talk and talk and talk. But a dead man is known by the fruit. 
and the, and the fruit is here. This, this is a holy thing that's happening here. And I just want to, uh, I mentioned this the Pastor Sunday, just I said, I'm, I'm broken, I feel humbled. I don't even want to open my mouth. And I, I thought of Ezekiel where it says he, he just sat where the people were. He didn't open his mouth for seven days. He sat where they sat, he ate what they ate. And I feel there's a responsibility for us when we come to a, a holy place like this to sometimes be still <laughs> and just be quiet and let God do in us what He needs to do before we become experts and go back to our country waving a flag that we're going to let us die first and begin to take on the image of the death that this man has taken on. Take on the likeness of his death and then enjoy the glory of when God resurrects you, if He resurrects you, if He gives you a nation, or maybe He chooses someone else in exchange for your death. But I just wanted to stop talking because I, I felt so humbled and God became awesome to me again. When I come here, and if, if anyone has, you know, I've, I've come here many times. I've spent a month with Pastor Sunday. You know, I could talk about what I've seen here, but it's, it's just talk. The awe of God came to me again, being here in this place. And I want to encourage you to, to go deep in the sense of not just head knowledge, not just systems. But to go deep with God, to give Him permission to break your heart. To have a broken heart over what He's done here. And to believe that maybe, in His mercy, He would do that in, in our countries as well. I think we need to repent. Hey, we don't have to do that now, but I think in our own ways, we need to repent. I didn't leave my room, I repented. I'm a foolish man. And it's only by His grace and His Spirit. Our only responsibility can be to, to be utterly surrendered and to die. Thank you so much. Yeah, we need to pay the price eventually. The knowledge is not enough. We must lay down our lives. That seed must die. The seed of sun. Even with the seed of the first sun it still has to die. For it to bring for the harvest. So death could be in different ways. But uh, that was that topic. I, I would lead, trust the Holy Spirit to lead you. So, so I stand on that one. But today we are starting the, the real program for the, for, the, for the retreat, for the training. The first thing I want to talk about, the, the whole idea, the whole, program, the whole topic of the day is called uh, self-evaluation. And the message I want to you know, the, oh, the message today is self-evaluation. Okay, re-evaluating your life is the goal of the day. But uh, our, uh, the message of today is the message right now is self-evaluation. But in that self-evaluation, I want to talk about several things. Uh, you know, for, I want to start with us knowing that life is predictable. Life is predictable. The greatest secret of success that I have discovered is that life is predictable. Mm -hmm. That is shocking to me. Because I grew up in Africa thinking where well, I would think that everything depends on fate and destiny. Fate and destiny. You know, fate that like God. And everybody in Africa, the reason why most people go to church is because we want to pull the hand of God so that God will make me to be the one that will be successful. So that God will bless me. So that God will, you know, you know, I will find God's favor. Mm -hmm. And so through God's favor, I become something in life. So that God should do something for us. You know what I discovered? I don't want to offend your religious mind. But life is predictable. With or without God. What I mean by with or without God is with faith in God or without faith in God. Either you believe in God or without you don't believe in God. With God in your life or without God in your life. Life is still predictable. I think that's a strong statement. But I will, don't stone me yet. I, I, I will prove it to you. 
And of course, you know I believe in God. I'm a preacher of God. My name is Olorua. In Yoruba language, that means there is God. I have a book about that. My biography is all about there is God. And the, the, the dominance of God. And the, the headship of God. The supremacy of God. But I'm saying, God has created this world in such a way that things will function without Him coming to interfere. Or to, 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 you know, to do things that you, you are supposed to do. God has put things in place. And that is the extreme that the scientists of this world have discovered. And since they discovered that, oh, life will fu- function without God, they have now gone to the extreme and now made the mistake of thinking, it means God is not needed. Or there is even no God at all. But they don't know that they are even, what may, is making them to come to that conclusion is even as a result of what God has provided. You see? But also, the Christians could go to the other extreme as well. Thinking that without God we can do nothing. And, and, and that, you know, God, yes, without God we cannot do, we can do nothing. But that doesn't mean that God has to come and show up every day to do things for us. Without God we can do nothing means, without God we not even breathe because He provides the breath and the oxygen. Without God we can do nothing means, without God I will not even be existing. Without God, I cannot even wake up in the morning. That is all. But that doesn't mean, without God, I cannot do anything in the sense that I shouldn't pro- propose anything. I shouldn't launch out. I shouldn't even try to imagine anything without God. No, He has given you all the equipments, all the Im- implements for you to be able to do that. With, with, with Him in your heart. But don't wait necessarily for Him to show up every time to take you by the hand and tell you this is what to do and this is what to do. Well, the greatest secret that I've discovered in life is that life is predictable. Meaning that meaning that life has been founded upon concrete and fixed laws and principles. Life has been founded upon concrete, predictable, fixed laws. So much that if you would discover those laws and principles, life becomes predictable. If you discover those laws and principles upon which life itself has been founded, you can apply them or make your life line up in accordance with these principles. And these laws. And you could predict that if you do this and do this by this way and that, you will have this end result, no fail, no failing, nothing. That is how life is being founded by God. That is how God has established everything on this planet. Earth. He has established in such a way that things will work. And that there are fixed laws. And there are fixed principles that are responsible for every aspect of life. That is how God has created life. Which means that things don't just happen in life. In life, in life things don't just happen. They happen only as a consequence of some principles that are either obeyed or violated. They happen only as a result or consequence of principles that were either obeyed or violated. Like, for example, if if I uh, am overweight, for example, I don't just overweight because you know it just happened. It's not my fault. I you know it just happened by accident. You know, you know I didn't do anything. No. It is as a result of some principles that are, in this this case, obeyed or violated. What do you think? Violated. Violated. Now, who could tell me some of the principles that are violated when you're overweight? Yes. But do you know, there are some people who are so ignorant, Christians, that would say, say, no, that's just the way I am. Mm -hmm. You know, all they could say is a curse. 
Oh, you know, there's just, you yeah. know, so, so we could be so superstitious that we lose common sense. And God is the, is the biggest common sense there is. <laughs> Intelligent design. Mm. So, anything that has happened to you is as a result of either some laws that were obeyed, obeyed or violated. Okay. The reason why where you are today and why he is not there or why you are, you are, you are, why, why, you, why he is not there is because of some principles or laws that were obeyed by him and maybe violated by you. So anybody therefore could attain any height he or she desires if he will do what? Follow or obey certain principles that are responsible for that height or for that achievement. If they will obey those laws and principles that are responsible for that particular achievement. For example, you might have a boss in your place of work and you are the worker or you are the subordinate. Why is it not, why is it not the opposite? Why is it that he's the boss? Mm-hmm. He has done something right sometime. Mm-hmm. And maybe I've not done as much as he has done. Mm-hmm. You understand me that? Mm-hmm. So, things don't just happen in life. There are consequences of the laws we obey or we will violate. Now, we believe that in miracles, I do believe in miracles. There are miracles in life, but, listen to this now, Men, we are not designed to live by miracles. There are miracles in life, but we are not designed to live by miracles. But in the church, you know what we what we emphasize? We teach people more to believe for miracles. Instead of us teaching them to recognize and know the laws of life. Because the Bible is the book of laws. It said this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. And it is not just the book of the law. The Bible is a book of principles. And truth. It's the word of God. The word of God is the truth. So instead of us to teach people principles. Of how life functions and how to live by the principles that will make them to get results in different aspects of their lives, we make things superstitious and we just push them to believe God for miracles. But I'll, let me disappoint you. The probability of miracles in life is only 2% highest. The probability of miracles in life, in day to day living, is 2%. 2%. That's the highest probability. That is to say, God does not expect you on a daily basis to be waiting and praying for miracles. Miracles are the exemptions. Exemptions. Exceptions. Exceptions. They are the exceptions. The rule in your daily life is supposed to be knowledge of truth. Knowledge of rules. So if you are supposed to be a, an actor, for example, you don't say, I'm going to the office hoping for a miracle that God will, you know, do my design for me. You need supposed to know what you're supposed to do when you go to the office. Don't hope that God will do some miracle and your design will just appear from somewhere. <laughs> and if you are a, a health worker, you better be, know what nursing is. And what medicine is. Don't just expect no Holy Spirit will tell me. Even though you never went to school. So, on regular day-to-day life, God expects us to know principles that guide life. Or that guide are responsible for your area of life. And live by them. Rather than waiting on God to do something. As a matter of fact, miracle is only supposed to happen in your life, only when you have exhausted all your own possibilities, mm. only when you have done your best, 
Nobody has the right to ask for miracles without exhausting himself. When you have done your best, when you have studied the best you could, when you have worked the best you could, then you could say, God, I have done my best. Now I need you. So as believers, knowing God and having faith in God is an added advantage. Because God has already made everything to work by principles, even without us praying to Him. But when we know Him and pray to Him, we have an edge. And we have access to supernatural. That's why it's called supernatural. It's superhuman. Supernatural possibilities. And that's what miracle is. But if you have not <clears throat> proven yourself to have done your best, and you ask for miracles, you are insulting God. And you are abusing miracles. It's like saying, uh, I need God to, you know, you know, to help me grow my church. And uh, I don't wake up in the morning, I don't walk, I don't study, I don't, you know, struggle, I don't, I just say I'm praying. And I don't go and evangelize, I don't direct people, I don't teach people, I don't train people. That's an insult on God. Only after I've done all the humanly possible, then God will do what is not humanly possible. Yes. Could, could that explain why some developed countries like in North America will say, we don't see so many miracles here, yes. but we're eating terribly? Yes. Could that explain maybe why we're not seeing so many miracles is we don't need it the way... That is true. It's some, some of the... De definitely, because you don't need it. Because they, you know, people, things, have been, things work. And, uh, and uh, that's why, you know, but in some countries where things don't work, you need miracles. So what does that tell us? It tells us that we should miracles should not be expected because miracles are the exception. They are the exceptions of the rule. That's why they are miracles because the world is not designed to live by them. The earth is not created to live by them. The earth is created to live by principles. Why? Because the earth is physical and material world. We are living in physical and material world. So the rules here are rules and principles. Fixed laws are the rules here. In the material world. The, the earth is not spiritual. The earth is physical and material. You know what the spirit is heaven. When we get to heaven we will be living by the spirit. But here we live by rules. And by order, by fixed laws. So, brothers and sisters, don't try to be spiritual. It's, you know, don't try to become spirit. Some of us we are so spiritual that we are earthly useless <laughs> and irrelevant now. But if you are earthly, if you are not good for the earth, then you should die. You should be killed. Because you are sent from the spirit realm to come here to function by the rules of the earth. So you are not spirit yet. You know who is spirit? He. He is spirit. You, we are not, no matter how spiritual you pretend to be, you are not spirit yet. You are flesh and blood. <laughs> Even though you have spirit originally, but God limited that spirit to your, by your flesh and by your body. It, it, it constrain the spirit so that you will not, you will not fly away <laughs> and be irrelevant here. It constrain the spirit so that you will be useful here on the earth. So that you will, be, you, you will not fly in the air but you will land on the, on the, on the earth and, just, and, be, and be yourself. But we are struggling all the time to get out of that flesh. To get out of the body and try to fly somewhere and live in the spirit. That's what makes us earthly and good and irrelevant. Relax, my friends. Relax. You are meant for here. You are created for here. So you must know the laws of this place and how it functions so that you will be able to bring glory to his name. It is only when you know and understand the physical laws, the material laws of this earth, that you could cause the earth to glorify him. But if you don't know it and you want to escape from what you are supposed to subdue, 
Because we are supposed to subdue the earth, which is physical. But if you are always avoiding it to go to the spirit, God is saying, but you are not needed in the spirit. I have angels there. I brought you from there here now. And you will still come there. When you need that, I will collect you. But here, I need you now to function. <laughs> and bring me glory. And subdue the earth to form to me. <laughs> oh my God. Mm. So study is the key. Learn as much as you could about the earth. Learn about the creation of God. Learn about His laws and His principles. Learn about the laws of nature. The law of science, the laws of the things you are supposed to practice and you are supposed to do. Be a, an expert in what you are supposed to do. And that way you glorify God through your knowledge. As a matter of fact, for anything spiritual to have relevance on this earth, it must be converted to be, to be physical. Like Jesus, for example, like I said in the world. The world has to become flesh to have relevance at all. Can you imagine? Jesus, God, Son of God, the creator of the whole thing, has to become what? Flesh. For him to become the Savior. <coughs> Otherwise, he cannot become the Savior the the, in the Spirit. Even Jesus has to become material to have relevance on the earth. So, all the spiritual blessings that you all have, no matter... How anointed, how blessed that thing is. Until you convert it, it's useless. <laughs> so don't brag on all the yours, you know, your spiritual qualities and, you know, and, you know, and uh, all these things. If you cannot convert them to b- become material and to have physical, no, no, relevance, it's just useless. So you say you are good. How do I know you are good? Act it out. Oh, you say you are spiritual. What is the what fact of it? What is it? Where is the proof? Of it? <laughs> That's why Jesus said, "Don't nobody should say he has faith." If your brother comes to you and asks for a, a warm cloth or something like that, will go and God will something. That's not faith. <laughs> faith, which is spiritual, must be demonstrated in the physical. <laughs> Kindness, which is a spiritual quality, must be converted to be to be to, be, to, be, to become physical. The manifestation. Mm. What is it? Prayers. If you pray, what it, it must produce result. For it to anything of spiritual significance, anything of spiritual value does not have significance on the earth until it is converted. Mm. That which is a proof to us that we are supposed to function on the earth this way. This is the way to function on the earth. Mm. And this is the way to bring relevance to the earth. Mm. By producing mat- physical material results. And that's what makes life pre- predictable. What does that mean? That means, if any of these people, any of these great people, and this thing I'm telling you was, this law I'm telling you was discovered in science by our brother, who is a spiritual person, Isaac Newton. He's one of my heroes. One of the greatest scientists the world has ever known. He was a believer. In fact, it was discovered that he wrote more about the Bible and sermons and research in the Bible than scientists' discoveries. And he's still one of the greatest scientists alive. I mean, you know, whoever lived. A believer. It's pressure. Mm. Mm. But he discovered these laws of thermo, the, the, uh, thermophysics, or what do you call it? Yeah, thermodynamics. Thermo, thermodynamics. Thermodynamics. Mm. Thermodynamics. Mm. No, the thermodynamics law is that if you don't do something, mm. nothing comes out of nothing. If you didn't do anything, you don't expect anything. Yeah. And anything you do, you know, is a result of, you know, anything you have is a result of what that you have done. Or refuse to do. But then, it's not just for science, it's for life as well. That's the believer who do discover that. By studying science, physics, the laws of physics. You see, that's how God created, you know, the world. So, you cannot just be, no, we cannot just be overly spiritual. And that is why Africa will never develop until we get this message. Mm. Believe you me, we will never. Because I've been to Africa where I've seen people, they would rather go to church to pray for eight hours, run away from work. Mm. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Even at the work time, they will be praying. 
But they don't just, they didn't know that the time they had the work, if they do an excellent job and do it with all their heart and be diligent, they are also praising God and worshiping God through their work service. Work is also one of the means of worship. That's why God didn't tell Adam in the Garden of Eden when he took him and put him in the garden, he didn't tell him, stay here and just worship me. He said, till that ground. <laughs> Get busy. That is the way you worship. Why is it worship when you walk? Because you are causing the creation of God to be subdued by him. By tilling the ground, by discovering, you are building, bringing forth his glory or his beauty or his possibilities. By subduing the earth, by you know working and doing an excellent job, you are exposing his glory. So, what, by worshipping God, by subduing creation, by you no know, exploring creation, you are uh, discovering His glory. Mm. And you are revealing His glory. Mm. And you are, you know, you know, giving Him praise. That's why He didn't tell Him, go sit down there and just pray. Mm. Otherwise, nothing would have happened. So, the world... The Western world in particular, they are developing creation. They are, you no, know, no, discovering creation. They are, you know, d- revealing the glory of God through creation. Mm. While Africa will just pray in the spirit and nothing exists. Mm. Nothing works. Mm. Mm. Nothing functions. Mm. Because we will just remain in the spirit where we are not supposed to be. <laughs> <laughs> and neglect the earth to which we are responsible, direct responsibilities. Mm. That is what you think should be subdued. By obe- obeying Him, the obedience to subdue what we say we should subdue, we are glorifying it. Mm-hmm. Obedience is the highest level of, 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 of worship. Mm-hmm. Obedience. If you know me, if you know me, if you are my disciple, obey my my commandments. And his commandment is that you no, know, subdue the earth. Be fruitful, multiply, and subdue the earth. So if you are subduing the earth by walking, you are that the glory the, is bigger and stronger than singing in church. That is stronger. That is more worship, higher worship than just singing in church. Because you cannot sing better than them, them angels. Those angels will still beat you in those angels. But what you are supposed to do is to subdue the earth. Are you listening to me? So, life therefore becomes predictable in what sense? If anybody has done it before, look at all these men, great men. If anybody has done ever anything, if anybody has ever achieved any result, if I will discover the laws and the principles that that person obeyed and follow it and discipline myself to do the same thing, to follow the same principles, I will achieve the same result. Mm. Hmm. That was, that's what made life predictable. Because it's not because it's lucky. It's not because God blessed him. He's the one that's anointed. Mm-hmm. God just blessed him. I hallelujah. Mm-hmm. God just woke up. God, God just favored him. You are favored by God. He just favored him. That could be true. For you to have favored by God. God is not a whatever. Hypocrite. Or he's not impartial. God is not partial. God is not a respecter of people. You two are favored in your own class. But if you don't discover the principles of success. Principles that these people use, but if you discover and apply yourself, the discipline to apply yourself, you will discover that anybody can achieve any goal if they will follow the same principle that that person who had done it before has, has applied. Are you following me now? Yeah. Therefore, write this quotation down. I submit to you, therefore, that there is no failure in life. There are only people who either don't know the laws and the principles of success or they are unwilling to pay the price to apply them. You want me to repeat that? There are really no failures in life. There are only those who either don't know the laws 
and principles of success. Or they are unwilling to pay the price for them. Mm. Are you listening to me now? Yes. Meaning, everybody could be successful. Mm. Everybody could attain any height and any goal in life. Mm. Only in case you're supposed to, what is the word? Only if that person pays the price to discover the laws that made that person be successful, and not just discover it and know it in the head, also pays the price of discipline to apply those laws. Yes. Are you listening to me? Yes. Yes. People who are in sports, they know what I'm talking about. Or people who are high achievers, they know what I'm talking about. But, you know, but in Christianity sometimes, we just want to wait and wait on God. But you, you remember that when, when I said there are no failures in life, I didn't mention God in anything I've just said. You, that means it does, you don't have to be a believer. Because the earth itself is founded on laws and principles. The knowledge of those laws, the discoveries of those laws, and the application makes the champion. For example, 100 years ago, a village teacher is the most important person in that village. Maybe 50 years ago even. Some people in some villages still like that. But a village teacher now is who? Nobody. The least. Very good. The least. The person is nothing. You know why? Because in those 100 years, it's not just philosophers or people who are born from, you know, people say, oh, God gave them the gifts. No, who can read anymore? Now, they have discovered the laws of reading and writing or the laws of literacy. And you know what the laws of literacy is? Alphabets. So, through, when the alphabets were composed and when the law of alphabets were, disco- were, were discovered, it became very easy for anybody to learn to read and, and, and write. Just discover the alphabet in that language. And anybody from the other part of the world could even come and learn any language in Africa, Asia, anything. Just like I'm speaking Russian now. If you know the alphabet. But before, we thought those people were God. God sent them. He said, Ooh, he's a philosopher. People who read before. Anybody could do anything that anybody has ever done if you could discover the law. Let me give you other examples. For example, drivers. Do you know, 100 years ago, even some 50 years ago, if you are a driver and you drive a car into a town, the whole town will come and see you. Yeah. <laughs> In fact, drivers were being given national honors because they could drive. <laughs> My God. <laughs> In fact, till not long ago, people were going, people were dreaming in high school or primary school. You ask who would we become? They were dreaming of becoming drivers. Wow. Until the laws that were responsible for those operations were discovered. After the laws of were discovered, the principles, because people discovered that for everything there are principles. So people just sat down, did the equations and the calculations. You know, derived principles and put it in a formula. You get it? And then they started opening auto, uh, auto drive, or what do you call it? Driving schools. Driving schools. And since it, it became multiplied, tell me, do you need to be born from heaven and be gifted by God to, to know how to drive now? No. Even the hardest of all things, you know, there used to be a time. When uh, astronauts, you call them astronauts? Yeah, the astronauts, we used to think they must be special people, specially prepared. And the, most, the, the healthiest person in the world, if that's what we go to, it used to be like that 10 years ago. But today, any, because the principles have been made available, the laws have been discovered. This has been composed, has been made available. Anybody who wants to fly, any one of you here, you are still eligible to fly to, 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 to space if you want. 
Just provide the money. They will teach you in four months only. Yeah. And you'll be able to go to Spain. Yeah. Before, you need a lifetime to go through that training. A whole lifetime. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. Everything is possible in this world with or without faith in God. Mm. <laughs> Why is this without faith in God? Mm. That sounds like an insult to God to me, myself. Even. That sounds abrasive. And you know, the reason is because God himself created the world to function yes. like that. God has submitted this whole world to the laws of to the laws of God, to the laws of material and physical laws. Gravity and all those kind of laws. Physical laws. God himself submitted for it to function by itself like this. But if we neglect God, God will show us. And we will regret it. And then we'll go to hell. But for you to live on the earth, you don't need God to live on the earth. But for you to go to live on in heaven, yeah. you need God. That is why we must get saved on the earth so that we don't go to hell. So I don't know if you get it. You know, on other, right. Let me say in a new way, in a different way. A Japanese, let's say you are the Japanese. No, you are too big for a Japanese. <laughs> you are the African. Yeah, you are the Japanese. You are the Japanese. <laughs> you are the African. <laughs> what the African does is that it's spiritual. It's only thinking without God, we cannot do anything on the earth. But it's not true. God created the earth so that you can function without Him. If He had created the earth that you cannot do anything without Him, then. It will be a dictator. Yeah. Then it will be no. It will be controlling. It will you know. It will not be God. Yes. So he created the earth so that it will be able to function by itself. But you are the African who think no. I need God to even be able to remove my shoes. I need God to even be able to wake up in the morning. Well, he has given you Moses, and he wakes you. He gives you life. He has given you life. Do whatever you want with it. But you have the choice. So because he. You know, he's not going to school, he's not educating himself, he's not paying the price. He, I mean, so he's poor. Because only the hand of the diligent make it rich. Yes. But the Japanese guy doesn't know God at all. But he's a believer. Born again, spirit in tongues. Mm. But he's a non-entity in life. Mm. And a mediocre. Mm. <laughs> so he's not achieving any result. He's just a good guy, mm. you know, but empty in the head. So. Mm. He doesn't know laws and principles. So he's praying and believing God for everything. Sometimes God does miracle two percent possibility, probability. <laughs> but eighty percent is struggling and wondering why God is life is not fair and why God things are so difficult, even though he's serving God all his life. And the ones that are not serving God, they are making it all that. The reason is because even the guy no, the guy is not serving God. And he doesn't even believe that God exists. But he has discovered the laws of God. That says for Ram, the end of the diligent make it rich. He doesn't even know that Bible verse. Mm. But he just knows that the principle of hard work. Mm. He just knows the principle of you know, no education, discovering, knowing law, and something. And he's a Japanese. He's just today working hard and he's wealthy, rich, everything. But he doesn't know God. He doesn't even believe in God. He doesn't even know the name of Jesus. Now, for him to function on the earth and be prospered on the earth. It will do better. It will function better on the earth. It will prosper better on the earth. It will, you know, you know, start, it will have more results on the earth than him. No matter how much he prays. Mm. Believe me, this, this is true what I'm telling you. Yes. Mm. No matter how much he prays, no matter how much he believes, no matter how much he fasts, no matter how all the angels have visited him, mm. <laughs> this guy will still be living better. Mm. Because God has created the earth to work by laws, rules, and principles. You cannot say because I believe in God, I want to jump from ninth, ninth floor. No. This is a law of gravity. God has placed in play. Don't violate it. You don't honor God if you don't discover his rules and his principles. You don't believe in God. Your faith is a mock, a mockery. Look at him that doesn't even believe in God. He's doing all that, walking and following <coughs> principles or discovering the laws of God, applying them. So, the Japanese, average Japanese, is, is, is well, well, you know, is well, well to do, better than an average Japanese. 
So that believes in God. So it has money. It functions better on the earth. Because it applies the new principle. It applies itself to the principle and the laws of God. But when it dies, that's a proof that for you to function on the earth, you don't need God. <coughs> the fourth Health existent, God is not needed and necessary by as a condition compulsory. Mm. But if he dies, he mm-hmm. needs God to function and live in heaven. Mm. But if it, but that's why on the earth he must make his choice to meet with God. That is one of the laws of God to encounter God, to get saved in His Spirit, so that he could be prepared to function in the earth, in the in the in the, in the, in the life to come. So for heaven, we need God to live in heaven. But to live on earth, you can't live on earth without God. But later on, your life here on earth will come to an end. Sooner or later. Of course, but what about if he's a Japanese? He knows God, or, in Niger- or an African. <laughs> but he, he, and also knows the laws of God. Added value. Yeah. Added advantage. That is the best life, both on the earth and in the heaven. Yes. You understand me now? Yes. Yeah. Yes. And you can have more results that way. Than just one of the other is fair. Do you get that? Yes. yes. Okay, you wanted to say something. Thank you. Oh, uh, you see that? You have made the question relevant. Okay, okay. That's why I didn't want to give you the chance to speak before. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about is that I want to give you people practical, uh, practical, mm-hmm. it's going to be more practical, the things I'm going to teach you now. Learning to use technology. Mm-hmm. Huh? Pastor Mike, you have a question or a comment, maybe? Uh, it's, it's a question. Okay. Would it be, would it be correct then to even say that the devil cannot do anything about the principles of God here or now? As we no, you cannot. If it's principle, unless it's not principle. Mm. Okay. But it yeah. will, it will, yeah, it will also do. It could do something only in case, okay. only in case you violate some law mm. as a principle. Mm. You give him the room. You invite him. So all the time we are spending, all the time we are spending. Trying to say Satan is trying to disturb me. Follow the rule. <laughs> Why is it like not disturbing the white man? <laughs> <laughs> Why is it like it's only you black? That is not <laughs> The black man who is having the result, he's getting the result without even buying any Satan. Uh, he's just doing it. He doesn't even know that Satan exists. Yes. Uh, he doesn't even believe it because he's following the rules. <laughs> Yes, and that's what happened to Adam. Yes, he caused Adam to disobey the principle. You got it, man. You got it. Say it again. Explain that. Obedience. If you obey the principle, you get the result. So Satan will not be the one to say, "Oh, the devil made me to do it." No, the devil will not be the one to make you disobey God. He will cause you to disobey the rules. It will cause you not to obey the principles. And if you don't obey the principles, like uh, Bela, it causes them to disobey the principles. And if you don't obey the principles, like Adam, then you will not get the result. Okay. I just have two tra- two teachings here I want to give you. I don't know which one to start with. I've given you the greatest secret of success. I still have self-improvement through self-evaluation or advancement and progress through changes. Let's start with self-improvement. Yeah, because I might not be enough to time. So, if everything... 
pastor, that was a good question you asked. So Satan is... <laughs> so all this noise we are making and trying to say that guy is responsible. Maybe he doesn't even know what is happening. <laughs> Maybe he doesn't even know what is happening. And we think, instead of going to work, we are busy buying the devil. Binding him. He's, he's, and he's happy, he said, thank God he's not going to work, he will not eat. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> he thinks I'm responsible. That is actually, you know, you know, a distraction that he enjoys. Okay, self-enhancement, self-enhancement or improvement through self-evaluation. This is going to be practical. Number one, it's a practical work you have to do. Number one, you have to answer me these questions today. Number one question. Remember that your life today is as a result of the principles, values you built it upon. That is the principles and values you applied yesterday that have become patterns, habits. What are the principles you lived by up to now? That is, your life today is a reflection. It's a result of the principles you live your life by. You get it? Or the principles you didn't apply. That's number one point. Number two point. Those, que- those points, I'm giving you the points now, but they will soon become questions later. But you got that point, right? Yes. For example, you got, you got that first point? You didn't get it? Okay, who thinks he gets it? You got it. I've just explained it before the people who didn't get it. Yeah, that's the first point. What I understand by it is that what, what our life is to be, where we are, what we are to be. is as a result of principles we have obeyed so far or principles we have violated so far. That is to say, if you are not Pastor Sunday, you are coming to learn from Pastor Sunday today, you are not Pastor Sunday who is teaching. What makes the difference? Even though you might, you might be of the same age or you are older than me or you even were older in faith before me. So what happened? What's the difference? There are principles you have understood and obeyed oh. that I have not. Oh. Or or there are principles that I have violated. Yes. You get what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah. But this is not just in the area of spiritual side. This is in every area of life. Family, business, work. I do get it now. Yes. Okay, the second point. Life is built on laws, rules, and principles. That is to say, if you have any result in your life, there are reasons for it. It is explainable. The result didn't come because God favored you. Just like these my twin, twins that are here. They are hard workers. They were some of the best students in, in university in America, for example, or in Africa too. Because they work. They work hard. Some people will just say, no, God bless them. <laughs> That's living in the fantasy land. They obey some laws and principles. It's, a, it's called cause and effect principle. It's a principle of cause and effect. Because God has placed that principle as one of the major principles on the foundation of the earth. To guide and rule the earth. Cause and effect is one of the laws of the earth that you cannot avoid or do without. Now, the third point, which is a question that you have to answer, is this. Therefore, to improve your life, you must make a list of those principles and values you have lived by till now. Try to evaluate. Ask your, squ- your, your name. What is the greatest thing you would have liked to... I mean, ask yourself. What is the, the greatest height you would have liked to attain? Where would you have liked to come to in life? 
And why are you not there now? And then analyze what are those principles that you obeyed that helped you to get there and the ones you didn't obey. You have them in this in this question. Okay, we'll, we'll get, get back to that later on. Do you get what I'm saying? Yes, okay, the next point, number four. So the first one is the, the you know number three was the one principle you had lived by. Number four, make another list of those values you had neglected or refused to live by. That others who have attained, how do we know the difference? How do you know the things you didn't live by? Study the lives of the people or look at the lives of the people who have attained that result you desire to achieve and find out what they have done that you have not done. I don't know if you get it. Yeah. So discover and make a list of those principles that you have not applied that they have applied. You get me now? You get me now? Okay. But you have to answer these things today. You understand? Okay, the next point. Hmm? Number five. The next point is evaluate and you you know after evaluating, after finding out those things, you have to make it. You have to you have to uh, make it a rule for you to fight against the low yielding values, low yielding values, because you have you've got some results, but some of those practices, some of those uh, habits. Might be low yielding. You understand what I'm saying? Instead of high yielding. So a low result. They give you small results. Some of your the way of life that you've had, some of the practices you've had, some of the values you've had, some of the you know beliefs you've had, some of the things you've done might be low value. Pay, take a decision to begin to fight them. And you have to write what are the, the values and what are the things you want to change or, or fight. And what what will you do to begin to to change them or alter them. The next point. Make a list of those values, principles, habits, patterns, that you see in your in your uh, in your mentor or in, your, in the people you you want to be like Jesus, like for example, disciples or your your stars. Or maybe not your stars. Your your, your people you like to be like mm-hmm. your role models, right? Your role models. Make that list plain for yourself as your target. For example, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, you yeah, make a list of the, the the character traits of your role models that they are good, that the values that they live by on regular their lifestyle. You remember, I said if anybody was able to do it, anybody can also do it. You can repeat it, but you must know first of all those principles, and then you must be disciplined enough to apply. Them. No, the next point. You have to work out a personal program of cultivating those values and principles in your life and character. What do I mean by personal program? Like for example, you said, this week we are going to teach you how to do how to cultivate that later on. We've got through the we are going to use the technology of uh, Benjamin Franklin. Franklin, we're going to teach you this week. How to develop 
no value systems. So, like for example, you could take a week and say this week you have to teach fifty-two weeks in a in a month. Yeah. You could in a year, sorry. You could take thirteen values or twelve or ten, and you could say for one week I am going to study or, or think about you know I'll read I'll research on this particular weakness that I had on this value value system. And I'm going to practice it like I did with that first Corinthians chapter 13. Until it becomes flexion. It's do the whole week. Then you will repeat that twice or so or three times in a year or four times. You know, the next month, I mean the next week you take another value or two weeks or something. You know, you could develop your own system. You get it? Yeah. Okay. Go on. Next point. Choose books or research books. Find books. Tapes. And then go to a seclusive place. Go away. Practice seclu- no, solitude. Where you'll be alone at least once a month. To study. To think. To meditate. And to work on yourself. To pray. Spend time to invest in yourself. Spend time to go away. I always do that. And I'm sure most of you know. Every month I must go away for a week. Where I go, not just to pray, but I take books with me. I take materials with me. In the area where I want to cultivate something in myself. Where I want to improve myself. I take tapes, CDs, like this retreat. I take it, I listen to it over, over, until I'm sure the word has become flesh. Until I'm sure the word that is new to me has become flesh. And I begin to practice it. I come out of there a violent man because the thing has become flesh in me now. And the nature of God begins to manifest in me. So practice that. Practice that on a regular basis. After you have, you know, adapt those principles in yourself, Make sure you go out to where real people are to leave them. Yeah. <laughs> go to where real people are to leave out those principles. Because those are the people who will tempt you. They will provoke you. They will, if you say, oh, Father, I've prayed. I've, I've got the victory. I prayed through. Uh, I will not have provoke. No, prov- I will not be provoked anymore. Well, until you are provoked, you don't know if God has answered that prayer or not. You don't know if that uh, thing has become your nature or not. But you don't just pray that God will not be provoked. You must walk on yourself. And until you are provoked, you don't know if you get it or not. Now, apart from what I've just given you, uh, if you have your green assignment page, assignment book, the part two, uh, The the next thing, my time is up. The next lesson I want to give you is self-evaluation. And we have already given it here. We have already written it down. In part one. Can you see self-evaluation? Part one. Similar questions, isn't it? Similar questions. That will allow you to analyze yourself. Then part two. See, you will see self-evaluation part two. Can you see it too? Yes. Part one and part two. You look through one and two. They are more practical something, and you have to answer them with what I've given you. What I've given you is like part two. But you look at it and say if there are some that are repeating itself or some that are not repeating. If they are repeating, don't write this one. The ones that are not repeating, just, oh. just do it. Yeah. But, uh, but part one, I've not given you that at all. But still similar. But all these assignments are to help you evaluate yourself and be able to come out with the life principles that will help you to become a better man. Are you listening to me? Yes, sir. Yeah. I would have liked to go through them with you, but you can do it yourself. You can do that yourself. Thank you. Okay. Um, so now we will write down our home assignment that we need to do by tonight.